Good afternoon, everyone. I work for Chapman BDSP as Principal Environmental Consultant. I also teach in two universities. The project that I'm going to present today is the LSC Central Building, which we worked on and recently got completed. It's developed by Richard Rogers, an architect for London School of Economics. We did significant amount of environmental and building simulations on the project to meet the high sustainability uh, criteria of the client. The first step for this was to develop key in passive design features which can be built in the massing. This translated into the vertical zoning of the building where lower floors were made for public use and the private spaces were zoned on top floors. This helped in creating an occupancy gradation from high to low, which further helped us in naturally ventilating the building. And this translated into 10 floors of natural ventilation with no, no cooling infrastructure. To prove this, we had to make use of lots of environmental simulation tools and parametric optimization, where information from one tool was used for another to create a truly integrated environmental approach. We also use parametric optimization to find the balance between the competing factors. The snapshot that you see on the right is an in-house developed script for optimizing daylight, solar, and thermal. In terms of facade design, we looked at building and its context. The image shows the amount of solar exposures on different facades of the, of the massing. We then deployed parametric optimization to find the varying depth of shading pin at different folds of the facade. And this translated into a uniform uniformity of solar exposures on, on the entire facade. This further helped in reducing the risk of overheating in the building. But we had to face the challenge of making these design and way constructible, for which uh, we were asked to reduce the shading depth while keeping the performance same. And the image that you see on the right is an outcome of the studies that we did. This further enhanced the daylight levels rather than just controlling the solar. And the next big challenge was to prove the natural ventilation in the building, for which we used lots of CFD simulations. The example here shows one of the cellular office, which is linked to the facade. Uh, the CFD simulation shows the amount of air flow from the com combination of bottom and top windows. We also try to measure the unmeasurables like people opening and closing doors to uh, enhance air <coughs> ventilation in the room. Overall, the building had, building had lots of features of passive <coughs> it, The floor depth, for example, is less than 15 meters. They got exposed uh, concrete to regulate temperatures and many other aspects. But the next big challenge for us was to make sure that the floor layout is done in a manner that no space needs mechanical ventilation. For this, we had to understand the building and every space that the house going to be used. The image here shows the type of different spaces in the building and when they will be occupied during the day, week and year, and what sort of equipments are going to be used in every space type. This helped us in the uh, where we simulated 600 zones at the same time, and every individual window was controlled independently. Using this thermal modeling simulation, we could predict the overheating and comfort in every space of the building, and we could predict the overall result for, for the entire or natural ventilated floor case. We then had to apply uh, test mitigation measures for areas which were not performing well, and these were left for user controls. So we tested uh, aspects like blind controls, opening doors, and making use of energy efficient equipment. Another big study that we did on the project was uh, embodied carbon assessment. The tool was developed in-house by me, and it was approved by the DRE. The tool helped in tracking the amount of carbon in building component, element, and material level. This also highlighted aspects like material which was less than 1% in quantity could contribute to 20% of carbon. And we looked in much more detail of the critical materials where the big, big items were made, strategies were made for big items. For example, slabs are made up of prefabricated concrete files had lost for GGBS, and aluminium was reduced in facade. 
The last thing that we did on the project was an operational energy assessment, uh, and we also tested the effect of the grid decarbonization, which highlighted the importance of embodied carbon. In Sabdi, we achieved the, uh, the building achieved the BM outstanding in construction. We had 70% of floor area as naturally ventilated, and we were able to reduce embodied carbon by 30%. Thank you so much. Hi, Darren Hopkins, about physics. Um, I'd just like to ask, what stage did you come on to the project, and how much um, uh, impact did the, your work have on building four? So, uh, this is a very good question. Thank you for asking this. But we started the project from competition stage, which is uh, stage one, and we collaborated with the architect to develop the scheme. We won the competition in 2013 as a design company. After that, we had a, we did a significant amount of work for the stage two and stage three, which we realized that it's going to be finished. But then, when the when the contractor got on board, we had to make lots of uh, other adjustments to make sure that building achieves the targets. Yeah, thank you, Thank you so much, Kartik, very well done. Okay, our next speaker is uh, Kareem Dada from Arabs. 